One of the Panchatantra programmers is creating and working on an obstacle game. So here I am, decided to get a basic tutorial in case any other children want to do this. So let's jump right into and look at what is it when we say we want to create an obstacle game. So obstacle games exist both in real life and very, very popular in computer gaming. So for instance, in real life, an obstacle game will typically have a few physical obstacles on a course and you can call it a race course maybe and the participants need to do different activities and typically jump over something glide under something there may be a water body to swim across there may be you know ropes so things like that and in a computer game similarly obstacle game has various kind of obstacles and levels so the player has to make the the gaming character cross the level by by avoiding being knocked out by these obstacles and there are certain other friendly items which help the um, the character to get some uh, additional life or more properties or you know added advantages if somebody was to develop an obstacle game. So what is it that we are really looking at? What are these elements we should be thinking of? Right, the central character of the game. So example, uh, one of the most popular games uh, has been the Mario. So Mario is the character which moves around and crosses those obstacles. And this player can acquire, acquire more properties at different levels. Then we need to identify the obstacles and collectibles. Um, and we need to know that for each level, how will we increase the level of difficulty. And sometimes uh, in final level, it can be more of a climax. Like in Super Mario, uh, it was about saving the princess. And uh, you know, once you get there, you kind of do a lot of different things to uh, achieve to complete the game. Let us hop over to learn the basic building blocks of creating an obstacle game. So we need a backdrop and what I've done created a simple two color backdrop. Um, now the reason you want a lot of empty space if you're looking to build different levels is so that when you add different things in upcoming levels there is sufficient space to do that make this doggy really really tiny and the reason again is that as the central character uh, gains further properties you may want to enlarge it you may want to give it certain things so again have space for it and as the uh, obstacles and different things come up, uh, you want it to be able to do lots of activities. What is the first thing we need the character to do is obviously to move around on the screen. So if, if our obstacle game is, is going to be run on the base, right? So we are gonna have this character touch this line. So what you would see when you've created a backdrop Right at the bottom, there is this black line. Uh, this is just to help identify that this is the base. This is one easy way to identify that this is a base. So let us get started with our coding. Let us start coding the movement of our central character, um, whose name is Chocolate. So for chocolate, we are going to say that initially you'll be positioned right here. And since we want it tiny, I'm going to just set the size and their initial settings are set. We want to give it movement. So there are um, there could be possible different approaches to this. So for instance, there is this event when up arrow, down arrow, right arrow, left arrow received. So when, so there is this event 
when either of these arrows get pressed and one can code up this right now since it is a control functions function what is more appropriate to use is under the forever loop we are going to use a condition which is available in the sensing block that is if key is pressed so if you look at it all four keys are available here we need a block so we are saying if right arrow is pressed right what do we want it to do we want it to move so we want it to move horizontally so we're going to change the x position by some value right so let's keep it five for now and we are going to run this so when you're clicking on the right it's going to go all the way and now i want it to turn left so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate and on left arrow i'm going to make it come to the left now what i also want to do is change its costume so that it is facing left um, so i do have the two costumes so whenever right arrow pressed it's going to be chocolate and when it is left arrow it is going to be chocolate three so yeah now when it receives an obstacle it will need to jump over and that's typically done in an up arrow so when up arrow is clicked we want we don't want to switch any costume so when up arrow is pressed what we want to do is change the y value so we go to motion and we change the y value by plus 10 yeah Right. so there it is it's going up up and up now one of the most popular things uh, which is done in any obstacle game anywhere you make a character go up is also um, potentially wanted to come down without even pressing the keys right until uh, until he is on an obstacle which is on top now in this case we want it to come back and that is popularly known as coding for gravity here i'm going to take up another event and green flag click and forever but now my condition here my condition here is going to be if it is touching this black line so I'm going to use the color code here. So I'm going to take, if it is touching this color, this should be easier now. Yeah. So, so what we're doing is it will keep checking. Oh, if we wanted to say if not touching color, not. So we come under operator and we take the not operator. So if not touching color black, we want it to come down. So we are going to change y by minus 10. Okay, so basically it's, this is acting so quickly that I'm not able to see it go up at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow it to be there up in the air just for a little bit. Okay, 0 0.01 seconds. Let's try that. Yeah. So you can take it up, 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 and then we can bring it down. Now, say we don't want it to go higher than this, right? We just want it to stay in the yellow band. So, what we will do is under this if key up 
before we change the value of y, we will put another and condition, another condition. Let's just duplicate this code. And this time we want to say if touching color. Then change y by t. Right, so it's not going higher than that. What we have accomplished is we have got chocolate move forward, move backward, jump up, jump down. Sorry, <laughs> jump up and come down with gravity. Now, what we're going to do is introduce an obstacle. Add an obstacle and just take our chocolate right back to the start if it touches. So you can see I've created like a little red object here and I placed it. And now um, what we're going to do is add the sensing code. So let's just duplicate this. So instead of touching color, we can directly use the touching. So I've just called this hole. It's like a red hole. I know it's a pretty one. So if it is touching hole, then we're going to send, send it right back. Actually, we can just create a set to start. And in this set to start code, I'm going to add this so that we have it clearly defined at one place. So if it is touching hole, I'm going to just set it to start. So let's see what happens. Yeah, so it's just coming right back. And if we are able to jump over it, it's right here, it's ready to go to the next level. Now, I can add some fun elements to this. So for instance, if it touches, I'm going to, I'm going to broadcast an event and I have called broadcasting an event in the hole and here we've got when I receive in the hole I'm going to switch the costume and play a little sound so if I just go right into it that's what happens and if I just jump over it it will be right it will be just all right um, so what I would do I would broadcast a message here set to start so that yeah and now i can make it jump okay so next what we're going to do is give chocolate a bone so we place the bone here and what we're going to do is duplicate this code and see if it is going to be touching the bone. We do want it to set it to start. We do want to broadcast something. So we are broadcasting got the bone. And we can do something with it. So for now let's just increase the size. So we will just change size by 10. Let's see that. So just make it jump. Let's make it jump. There. And this is a good level one. So let's look at the next tutorial to see what ways we can expand it. Or in fact, let's do this. Why don't you remix this project, make a next level, and get a good hands on practice on this obstacle game so that you are soon ready to design and create your own. Happy coding.